We'll go to the, uh, the tape now of the, uh, the crew breakfast. Uh, this occurs in the crew quarters of the ONC building. And we have the crew going from left to right. Uh, Guy Gardner, the, uh, the pilot, uh, he's making his first flight on STS-27. However, his flying experience goes back about 30 years. Jerry Ross, mission specialist. Uh, Commander Hoot Gibson. Mike Mullane, mission specialist. And Bill Shepard, mission specialist. The crew has a uh, wide variety of choices, ranging from cold cereal to steak and eggs. The, all of the crew have uh, our military officers, and uh, which is appropriate for this Department of Defense mission. Mike Mullane and Bill Shepard, the only Navy member of the crew, uh, a graduate of Annapolis. Hoot Gibson uh, now getting into his uh, pressure suit. The uh, Hoot is a, uh, a pilot both by, by trade and uh, by desire. Bill Shepard, uh, uh, Mike Mullane was taking a, a picture there as they get ready, a souvenir of their mission. Uh, they don't actually uh, wear the uh, helmets to the pad. However, they prepare the suits so that they're as close to ready uh, as possible, making sure everything fits. Uh, Jerry Ross, uh, mission specialist. Uh, after STS-5 until STS-26, it was not necessary for the crew to wear pressure suits. However, with the installation of uh, emergency egress uh, uh, procedures, uh, it was important that they do. Once they complete the suiting process and the announcement is made that they're free to go to the pad, they're on their way out of the ONC. Hoot Gibson, Guy Gardner, the pilot waving, uh, and there is Jerry Ross, uh, Mike Mullane, and Bill Shepard bringing up the rear. Going to the Astro Van, which is a converted uh, recreational vehicle that's used to carry them and the uh, support members of the staff uh, to the pad. Normally, Dan Brandenstein, who is chief of the astronaut office, and uh, Don Putty, who is the director of flight crew operations, uh, drives along with them. Dan Brandenstein uh, would get off uh, just before the turn is made uh, to go out to the pad and he would go out to the shuttle landing facility to fly first a T-38 uh, on a weather uh, reconnaissance and then fly the shuttle training aircraft. This is shuttle launch control at T minus nine minutes and counting. The countdown events are now being controlled by the ground launch sequencer from now until T minus 31 seconds when we begin the switch over to the onboard redundant set launch sequencer. The ground launch sequencer is part of the launch processing system and operates by relaying commands to the onboard computers, which then report back to the LPS system that the commands have been executed. T minus eight minutes, 25 seconds and counting. T minus eight minutes, uh, 16 seconds and counting. Uh, we have had uh, an order to proceed with the, uh, 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 that Houston send the stored commands, which is the final update for antenna management and frequency change. T minus eight minutes and counting. As we get to the T minus seven minute 30 second point, we'll begin retraction of the orbiter crew access arm. T minus seven minutes, 30 seconds and counting. The ground launch sequencer has started retracting the orbiter crew access arm. 
This is the walkway used by the astronauts to enter the orbiter. In case of an emergency, the arm can be placed back to in position within about 15 seconds. T minus seven minutes, 10 seconds and counting. T minus seven minutes and counting. Prior to coming out of the nine minute hold, uh, go, go was given by all of the various elements supporting, including the head of the mission management team, uh, Bob Crippen. T minus six minutes, 40 seconds and counting. Pilot Guy Gardner will be asked to set the switches in the cockpit to the pre-start position for the auxiliary power units or APUs at the six minute point. Th this consists of positioning a number of switched and verifying that they are in the proper position then throwing the three propellant isolation valve switches. T minus six minutes and counting. We may have a momentary hold at the five minute point uh, because of the heaters. Pilot Guy Gardner reporting pre-start of the APUs is in work. T minus five minutes, 30 seconds in counting. Mission control has transmitted the signal to start the onboard flight recorders. At T minus five minutes, the orbiter test conductor will ask pilot Guy Gardner to start the auxiliary power units, which move, provide hydraulic power for steering and controlling flight surfaces. Eight seconds away from T minus five minutes. T minus five minutes and counting. Pi Pilot Guy Gardner now flipping the three switches in the cockpit to start each of the three APUs. Activation is complete. Commander Coop Gibson has been asked to reconfigure the orbiter heaters for launch. Liquid oxygen replenishing of the LOX tank uh, has terminated. The oxygen fill and drain valve is closed. T minus four minutes, 25 seconds and counting. The residual liquid oxygen now flowing through the main propulsion system and back to the large storage tank to cool the engine system. Guy Gardner reporting APU start is complete. T minus four minutes and counting. The main engine final purge sequence underway and the main engine valves being checked. The orbiter flight control surfaces such as Elevon speed brakes and rudders being moved through a pre-programmed pattern to ensure they're ready for launch. T minus three minutes, 35 seconds and counting. All three engines uh, now being moved through a pattern uh, to verify their readiness to, and then they will be aligned to their start position. T minus three minutes, 19 seconds and counting. At T minus two minutes, 55 seconds, the start of the external tank liquid oxygen pressurization will begin. T minus three minutes and counting. We have just heard that a weather hold will be called uh, because of TAL sites, and we will hold the clock at 31 seconds. Ground launch sequencer has started to retract the uh, or should retract the gaseous oxygen vent hood at this point. That may not happen because of the hold. It is retracting. 
the crew has been asked to check the uh, the crew has checked the caution and warning. The clearing is complete. T minus two minutes, seven seconds, and counting. T minus one minute, 57 seconds, and counting. The crew has been asked to close the airtight visors on their helmets and start the oxygen supply to their pressure suits. Liquid hydrogen replenish of the external tank is stopped and pressurization to flight level is underway. T minus one minute, 30 seconds and counting. The clock will stop at 31 seconds because of a weather hold at the TAL sites. The, at T minus one, uh, the ground launch sequencer will verify the shuttle main engines are ready to start. The liquid hydrogen tank now at flight pressure. T minus one minute and counting. The sound suppression water system now armed. That uh, pre liftoff water is released at T minus 16 seconds. SRB joint heaters have also been turned off. Hydrogen. Uh, Burn igniters have been armed. T minus 40 seconds and counting. External tank heaters to ET to orbiter structural attachments turned off. T minus 31 seconds and holding. The launch director, Bob Seek, announcing that we have uh, uh, several minutes that we can hold at this particular point. Uh, we are in a hold because of weather conditions at the overseas uh, transoceanic abort sites. If we pick up the clock at this point, we would go for auto sequence start. Uh, this is when Atlantis's four redundant computers assume primary control of the vehicle. We have a go for launch. We have a go for the launch director has directed the to pick up the count. Three, two, one, T minus thirty one seconds and counting. We have a go for auto sequence start. The SRB hydraulic power units have started and moving those engine nozzles T minus 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10. We have a go for main engine start. Seven, six, we have main engine start. Four, three, two, one. Ignition and liftoff. Atlantis begins another space voyage as it clears the tower.
Atlanta's been given a go at throttle up. All three main engines back up to 104%. Downrange distance 7 nautical miles. Three good engines, three good APUs, relative velocity about 2,900 feet per second, downrange 12 nautical miles. Mark 1 minute 50, three engines up at 104 percent. SRB separation. Now 31 nautical miles downrange. First stage performance nominal according to the flight dynamics officer that call made to the crew. They're now passing through 204,000 feet downrange distance 46 nautical miles. They've been given a call indicating a two-engine capability to their primary overseas landing site. Now 55 nautical miles downrange. Three engines still up and running at 104%. Climbing at 1,500 feet per second, altitude 245,000 feet. nautical miles downrange. Mission Control Houston, Flight Director Gary Cohen polling our positions here in the control center, all reporting to go. Three good engines still up and running at 104 percent. Negative return call just went up to the crew. That indicates uh, they no longer have the capability to do a return to launch site abort. Atlantis now 167 nautical miles downrange. The press to ATO call just uplinked to the crew. That call indicates should they lose an engine they would have uh, sufficient velocity to press toward uh, an abort to orbit. Uh, case. Now 210 nautical miles downrange. The Press Tomiko call just made to the crew. That call indicates they have sufficient velocity to press to main engine cutoff conditions even if they lose one main engine. Atlantis now passing through 365%. Uh, the Group uh, 109 call just made to Atlantis. That call indicates that should they lose two engines, they would have the capability to make their transoceanic abort landing uh, on one remaining space shuttle main engine now passing through uh, 366,000 feet.
Atlantis now uh, capable of making a TAL landing with one main engine at 104%. All three main engines still up and running at 104%. Downrange distance 365 nautical miles. 14,000 feet per second, the speed. Atlantis now capable of uh, pressing to main engine cutoff conditions on one main engine at 104%, and all three are up and running at the present time. Three good APUs, fuel cells in good shape. Atlantis now 470 nautical miles downrange. Guidance reports uh, good navigation numbers aboard uh, Atlantis as she uh, is now 511 nautical miles downrange. Atlantis has now reached 3G throttling uh, point in her ascent. Uh, the main engine is throttling back now. They're at about 94%. Six hundred nautical miles downrange. Plan is now passing through uh, twenty three thousand feet per second. And we're standing by shortly for main engine cutoff. 700 nautical miles downrange. And Commander Hoot Gibson reporting to Mission Control as we saw the data here. Miko confirmed.